with this pain. Dealing with this pain. Now, what is this pain? Let's look at the definition of this pain. The definition basically of this pain, when we say this encouragement, is a feeling of losing courage. Discourage means to lose courage. Despair is to lose the other pain you have. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's a correct definition, but for context, to despair is to lose your pain. The other things that gives you hope, courage, strength, the fortitude, and the trust to continue. Sometimes you lose it. And it can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone. Our Lord Jesus almost came to the verge of losing courage. He said, my soul is sorrowful living on today. How you get So to be despaired is to get to that place to think that it is better to be dead than to be alive. Sometimes you are so discouraged and you feel like, what am I even living for? Wow. There is a lot you are living for. Because there are <clears throat> a great majority of people who literally depend on you. Recently, I was there and I received a text message from a friend. He was actually a year ahead of me. And the last time I ever heard anything about him was I think in about 2000 or in 99. When he needed prayer, so I prayed for him. Then we were all students. I prayed for him and he received his healing from a condition that he thought would kill him. At the time I met him, he was so discouraged that he had even given up on finishing his degree because he thought he was going to die. So he has left off doing his project. And when I met him, it was three months to his graduation. So he asked for prayer and I prayed for him. And then he was healed. After about 24 years, I've never heard from him. I haven't heard from him. And just during this COVID-19 era, he's a frontline health worker based in the United Kingdom. So I was there and he sent me a text message. After 24 years, he sent me a text message and said, for oh, some time now, the running temperature taking paracetamol, everything, and isn't working. So I need prayers. I've been asked to self-isolate or quarantine or whatever. So I need prayer. I told him, no problem. I'm going to pray for him. So I prayed for him. And to cut a long story short, in five days, he recovered fully and he was back to work. And he sent me a message to thank him. But the import is not the testimony of God's healing. The import is, I prayed for him 25 years earlier and he got healed. Within the 25 years, two decades and a half, a quarter of a century, I never heard from him. He didn't call me. He didn't send me a text. He didn't even like things I posted on Facebook. Then after 25 years, he had a problem. And the only person he could remember that this person knows God and can raise the dead. So let me call him or text him was this man whom he had not called or texted in a quarter of a century. What if I had gotten this courage along the way and said there is no reason to be alive and maybe I committed suicide what do you think would have happened to this gentleman if I said there was no reason to be but do you realize that even if there was no reason to be alive for 25 years for this gentleman it was the reason to be alive how many of you can follow you? so when you have come to that place in life where you think 
there is no reason to be alive remember there is someone who counts on you who would call you in about a decade to come or two decades to come that becomes a good reason to be alive despair when you feel like there is no reason to be alive remember there are many hiding in caves and in dark places who have been called you but they look up to you there are many ghosts you don't know there are many silent people who feed on your testimony are the reason why you need to be alive what you don't know is that there are many people far away they have never called you they have not texted you you don't even know they are watching you but your life is such an inspiration to this many so whenever the devil visits you and tell you there is no reason to be alive remember there is a silent majority whom you have not heard from but they take a lot of inspiration from your life so do not think there is no good reason to keep doing what God has called you to do I'm a preacher to you as a pastor who plant churches there is one thing I've known there, 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 sometimes there are some Sundays that your regular church attendees for a new church your regular church attendees won't come and sometimes one hour into the service when you are discouraged and you are thinking about closing the service and going home to eat rice balls by the time you realize no a stranger from nowhere will just enter the building and come and sit down and very often at your lowest moment when you thought the service would be only the pastor a stranger and i think sometimes those strangers are angels that just visit the service so that the pastor would not be discouraged amen so at least i just came to encourage you tonight that when you feel like there is no reason to be alive remember there is someone who is somewhere who has never told you or called you or texted you who takes a lot of inspiration from your life what are the sources of discouragement what are these sources of discouragement where, where does this despair come from now it's important for you to understand this both leaders and followers can be discouraged sometimes the person who is despaired is the leader the senior pastor the father the husband the ceo the head of the institution sometimes he is the person who is despaired hallelujah but at other times the person who is despaired is a follower are you following let me give you an example john the baptist sent his disciples to go and ask jesus whether he is the messiah or there is another that is coming at that point it was the leader who was discouraged or despaired but there was a time when david also got despaired in the palace of saul and in his case david was a follower and he was discouraged there was a time when our lord jesus christ was with disciples in a boat and they were tra traveling across a sea and a storm rose against them and the master was asleep now they were despaired it was the disciples who were despaired the master was sound asleep so sometimes the leader can be discouraged and other times the followers can also be discouraged but at other times both can be discouraged are you following the preaching is it a good point now it's important for you to understand that now when it comes to the sources of discouragement sometimes 
the number one source of discouragement is poor attitude and ingratitude from your assignment one thing that can make you very discouraged is when the people you are called to serve are the people who are frustrating you and making you despair hallelujah like david had a call to play the harp so that saul will be delivered from the demons that trouble is mine and the source of trouble for david was the master he was serving the person who was trying to kill him was the person whose life and ministry depended on him Saul's continuity depended on David and yet it was this same Saul who was seeking to kill David so for David his despair was his assignment we can see that in the life of Elijah he was called as a prophet to Israel to prophesy to the people of Israel and to Samaria the prophet was supposed to help the king to rule well and the person who was seeking to kill the prophet was the wife of the king Jezebel can I preach to you so sometimes the source of your discouragement of your pain and your despair is your assignment the beneficiaries of your grace they are the source of the trouble at other times it is the circumstances of your life sometimes what you are going through apostle paul says that we were pressed on every side until we even despaired of life itself so despair discouragement and a feeling of hopelessness is a normal thing and everyone could face it so when you feel discouraged when you feel despaired what should you do first kings chapter 19 there's one to 18 and Ahab told Jezebel that what Elijah had done and when how he has slain the prophets with a soul and Jezebel sent messengers unto Elijah saying so let the God do to me and Moshe if I make not thy life as one of them by tomorrow about this time the bible says that and when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba Beersheba which belonged to Judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and sat under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die and say it is enough now O lord take away my life for i'm not better than my father's and as he lay down and slept under the juniper tree that's the first secret the first thing every intelligent man or woman watching me or watch later should do when you feel despaired and discouraged is retreat and rest i didn't say retreat and pray because usually when you pray you say nonsense like elijah said retreat and rest but don't leave your company behind <laughs> It's a very dangerous thing to 
retreat into isolation when you feel discouraged. Suicidal thoughts will be lurking at your door. Retreat when you feel discouraged and despair. Retreat and rest. But don't leave your company behind. There was one day when our Lord Jesus Christ felt very exhausted. Because he had been ministering day and night and had not found time to rest. He called his disciples and said, Let us go apart into the wilderness and find a place to rest. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not leave his company behind. When he approached death, he said, My soul is sorrowfully living unto death. He took his disciples with him into the garden and said, Tarry here, I go yonder to pray. He did not leave his company behind. And after every one hour, he comes back to his company to check what is happening to them. So if you are the leader, like Elijah was the leader, when you feel overwhelmed, despair, and discourage, retreat and rest, but don't leave your company behind. The mistake Elijah did was to leave his servant behind. You know, it's a very dangerous thing, and I'm going to explain to you. No leader, as I'm standing here, when I am broken and discouraged, I don't want my assistant pastors and deacons and followers to realize that I'm broken. There have been times when I also break down sometimes. But when I break down, I don't want them to see me in my brokenness. So if Elijah had traveled with the servant, he would have been careful in his prayer. Are you following it? But he left his servant behind because he had made up his mind to tell his mind to God. That's why he left his servant behind. So that he can face God. Tete a tete. When you know me, person to person. One on one. So he left his servant behind because he was ready to speak in his brokenness. If you really want to deal with despair, when you feel overwhelmed, retreat and rest, but don't leave your company behind. You see that our Lord Jesus Christ left the disciples under a tree and went a, a, a journey, and they cried. You see, when the master is crying, he doesn't want disciples to see that the master too can cry. Leaders want to be very strong. Recently, I've been reading very disheartening news from America how pastors are committing suicide. Ministers. Yeah. And it's despair because usually you are strong. You don't want people to see you in your weak state. You don't want people to see you broken. So you hide and you talk all the rubbish and then you come out and try to be nice before the disciples to make them feel like, Charlie, as a pastor, he's very strong. Go, Charlie, bear your pastor up in prayer. It is a step to honor your pastor. I'm a preacher to you. Apostle Paul says that and pray for us. And pray for us. That's how Apostle Paul said. I'm a preaching to you. Uh, if you still have me, say amen to that. Glory to God. So he left his servant behind. Listen, if you feel overwhelmed, discouraged, despair, please retreat and rest. But don't leave your company behind. If you are not the leader, there is nothing like retreat. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you are not the leader, the rock that is higher than you is your leader. If you are the leader, the rock that is higher than you is the Lord. Are you following what I'm preaching? Are you following what I'm preaching? It is true that every man should pray. But sometimes if you're a follower, an assistant pastor, a branch pastor, if conditions become difficult, go and speak to your senior pastor. Someone sent you, don't die in the mission field like a fool.
So when we say that retreat and rest, that's for leaders. That you're a follower, an assistant, an associate. You run to your leader. And don't go there with answers. Otherwise you speak foolishness like Elijah spoke foolishness before the Lord. But when you're overwhelmed, retreat and rest. Don't pray. I, said, I didn't say retreat and pray. Retreat and rest. When you are overwhelmed, retreat. And when you retreat, if only you have the resources, you wake up in the morning, get some bread, get some vegetables, get some uh, uh, lamb or ham, get some sausages, eggs, prepare your favorite beverage, eat, be full, sleep. When you wake up, play music. If you can dance, dance. If you can't, eat again and sleep. Just eat and sleep, eat and sleep. That's all. Retreat and rest. Because one of the major sources of stress is fatigue. I don't know whether I've gotten it right. But tiredness can make you feel very stressed and depressed. So overworking yourself, working and working and working and working without taking rest can lead to depression. And it's not because there is anything wrong with you. You are just tired. Tired. So you rest. One day somebody told me, he said, Pastor, I don't feel like, I don't feel this. I asked the person, I said, do you like goat meat? She said, yes. I said, do you like fufu? She said, yes. I said, okay. Do you have money? She said, yes. I said, go and, go and buy goat. If you get the head and the testicles, buy it and the tail. Prepare pepper soup with plenty pepper inside pound fufu eat when you finish take a bath when you finish lay a mat on the floor sit on the mat and cry all that you can until you fall asleep when you wake up take your bath again prepare rice porridge drink if you feel like crying cry again until you fall asleep do that until you feel fine simple <laughs> listen retreat and rest don't go there pray My Sometimes you open your mouth, words don't come, tears run down your face. That is also a kind of prayer. When the tears come, don't dry them, lick them. Because they'll be dripping over your face and will be coming into your mouth. Lick them. If if mucor happens to come out of your nose, lick it. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm preaching. I'm giving you a, a cure for despair. So retreat and rest. Say amen to that. Forgive. Listen, if you stop yourself from crying, sometimes you will rather forsake. So if you feel like crying, cry. God didn't give us our tear bags for nothing. God didn't give us tears for nothing. God didn't give our eyes tears for nothing. It is for a reason. Crying and shedding of tears is an expression of a healthy emotion. It's not a sign of weakness. It's rather a sign of health. Many years ago, I don't know what happened to my tear bags. Is that how, what it's called? Tear bags or whatever. I couldn't shed tears many years ago. Until a few years ago, about some 14 to 15 years ago, when we lost one of our great friends, he went to be with the Lord. Very sad. Pastor Richard, but we knew a blessed memory. May he so rest in peace. When they broke the news to me, because I was on the line, and he was dying. He told me, 
pastor, your friend is gone for the first time in many years. My tear parts were healed and the tears began to flow. And since then up to today, I have received healing from the inability to cry. It's a good thing. Amen. Retreat and rest. The second thing that you do, we go to verse what? Five. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And when he looked, the angel had picked him. You see, I told you to eat. It's a spiritual thing. An angel picked him cake. He said, arise and eat. So the second thing you do is retreat and rest. But whilst in retreat, arise from time to time and eat. Refresh and refill for the journey ahead. That's the next secret. Refresh and refill for the journey ahead. Hallelujah. So number one, retreat and rest. Number two, refresh and refill for the journey. The angel woke him up and said, Arise, eat, for the journey is long. So refresh, refill, because there is a long journey ahead. Listen, we have miles to go. There is a long journey to go. There are chapels to be filled. There is a kingdom to populate. You cannot be tired now. You can't. So refresh and refill. Kadarababosha. Lazuzi Makaya. Kediyekero Gosipa. You can put it off if it's giving you problems there. Kalababa. Shande. Zobros Ketola Baba. Ashanda Laba Pros Kada. Logirian Dolobo Zima. Patekeriyanda Rababa Shaka. Patio do Gorogo Sekura Mamatai, Zima Makatori Abakaya, Patiago Zimo Rokoshe. I'm a preaching, refresh and refill for the journey. Arise and eat for the journey is long. Amen. Amen. Then the next one. The third thing you do. After you have retreated and rested, you have refreshed and refilled. Restrategize and run. Hallelujah. Restrategize. When you are despaired, restrategize after refilling. Restrategize and rerun. That's it. Everybody say that's it. Everybody say that's it. Elisha ate. Elisha arose. Elisha began to run. But he was running without a strategy. So arise. Refresh. Refill. For the journey. But when you have refreshed and refilled, restrategize. Before rerunning, Adazuche, Shabaraka, Padiando, Izozizo, Shabalaba, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And finally, when you have re strategized and you are rerunning, lastly, keep your words few. Keep your words few. You see, tough times doesn't affect anything the way it affects your thought pattern and mindset. The thing that will be affected most when you go through tough times and challenges is your way of thinking. But 
Elisha could have done what Ezekiel did. He was hiding in a cave. And the Lord asked him, What are you doing here? The most intelligent answer the man of God could have given is, Lord, in fact, I'm confused. I don't know what I'm doing here. That would have been a very intelligent answer. God asked Ezekiel, stand the valley of dry bones, which is actually, in natural fact, the valley of hopelessness. That was where he was standing. Because the dry bones were the hopeless army of Israel. Dry, broken mass of bones. Disjointed. Then God said, can these bones live? Elijah said, please, you are omniscient. I'm human. Whether the bones can live or not, you live in heaven. You can tell. So tell us and tell us what to do. Ezekiel was intelligent. Our prophet Elijah did not keep his words few. God is asking you a question. What are you doing here? That should let you know that you have no business being where you are. If God asks you, what are you doing here? It means that he didn't expect to find you there. But listen, sometimes discouraging circumstances can lead to two extremes which are very dangerous. Your discouraging circumstance can give you a delusion of importance or a delusion of impotence. Both of them are dangerous. <laughs> Elijah, Elijah suffered both. That makes his own double punishment. Elijah had an exaggerated estimation of who he was. And because he exaggerated who he was, he felt so impotent before the enormity of the rot he was confronting. He said, I am the only one who is still standing. No one else is standing. And now look at me. At the brother's side, uh, Jezebel was like, shut up. Who told you you are the only one standing? Who told you you are the only one willing to run this journey for the Lord? Who told you I'm the only pastor God could have given this message to? Stop feeling too important. It will make you feel too impotent. Rather, lift up your hands and say, God, I am but a little boy you call to be king over your people. If they bring me cases, I can't judge it. Give me your wisdom so I can rule. You see, Solomon's prayer is a prayer of wisdom. He did not have an exaggerated expression of who he was. And I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm this. Please shut up. You are nothing. You are dust. You are a worm. You are a sinner. Saved by grace. May the righteousness of God stop telling God what you have done. Read the book of Revelation. Say, I know you. <laughs> he told what said, please. I know you. I know your name. I know that you have the name that you are alive. But I'm God. I know you are dead. Hallelujah. Sometimes you walk about because nobody yen chi would di on a Mr. Righteous, Madam Righteous, Chin Yen Chi won't miss by Radidia, only mudin ni baby awate, and him say a bomb ranekwa, man of God for nothing. Ne papa mupadia, you are enemy of the cross. Timisrawa, when we come before God, when God asks us a question. When our superiors ask us a question, let us humble ourselves and not pretend like we have answers. One day I was speaking to someone, I told the person, you are a pastor of only one of the branches of the church. I'm the senior pastor of all the branches. You don't have a more total picture of the church than I have. Let your words be few. And I got up and left. You are just a member of the church. Don't believe yourself too much that you have fella. What fella do you have? I'm the pastor of the church. 
How about the filler from the whistle blowers? Fill up from the Holy Ghost, fill up from Jesus, fill up from my own investigation network, fill up from all kinds. I have the more total picture. Keep your words few. Now, God doesn't need filler, God doesn't need crystal blower. God has a complete picture of what's on the ground. When He asks you a question in your moment of despair, keep your words few. My daughter, my son. With these few words, he admonish. I see you coming over discouragement. I see you coming over despair. I see you rising again. Like a dolphin from the depths of the water. Just to show your beautiful smiling face to the sun. And dip again to the applause of those who thought you were drowned. This storm can never drown. This storm was not meant to break your boot, if anything at all. This storm perhaps was sent by God to reveal to you that you are but a man when you are converted. Encourage your brethren. God bless you.